What are the four little words that strike fear in the heart of every marketer? Fourth quarter budget cuts. Have you heard these words recently? If you have, I wouldn't be surprised. Just when we emerge out of the challenges of a global pandemic, we are thrust into a global economic meltdown that is affecting every facet of industry. Inflation is rampant, interest rates are at a 20-year high, and no one is immune, not even the global tech giants that were riding high for so long. But time out. Didn't I promise you that this talk was going to be hopeful? Well, we have two choices here, folks. Surrender to the hysteria and hype, give up all hope, and wait until the dust clears, or choose to see this time of great adversity as an opportunity. Separate the signal from the noise, remove the emotion, and focus instead on the only truth, the data. Now, the world of marketing has a lot of opinions flying around, but as Chief Strategy Officer for BAV Group, we bring data to the opinion party using our secret weapon called Brand Asset Valuator. BAV is the world's leading authority on data-driven branding, and we've been studying brand growth and decline for nearly 30 years. So let's hop into the time machine and share some lessons learned from the previous economic downturn that can help you not only weather the current economic storm, but emerge stronger. Looking back to the brand data we have from the Great Recession in 2008, we see three key takeaways. The first is that brands that survive bring a human-centered energy and ingenuity to the table. Imagery attributes like down-to-earth, trustworthy, reliable, and friendly top the list that drove brand strength post-recession. In times of struggle, people want to know that you have their back and that you're there to help ease their friction. A brand that exemplified this during the previous recession is Chase. By launching new products, prioritizing relationships, and providing smart solutions during a time of financial stress, Chase's brand recovered at a faster rate than the other brands in the J.P. Morgan Chase portfolio and other brands in the category. And by 2017, Chase was recognized as more purposeful and ingenious than even prior to the recession. Lesson number two. During times of crisis, people are looking to brands to behave as beacons. After all, brands represent a fundamental shortcut to help people make easy, lower risk choices. 62% of consumers trust private companies more than governments during times of uncertainty to take care of their needs. These times of uncertainty present an opportunity to invest in brand and infrastructure. It was during the downturn in 08 that Domino's Pizza doubled down on their investment in brand and admitted that they not only had a major brand image problem due to some unsavory videos that an employee leaked, but also an infrastructure challenge. By investing in their branding as well as their digital technology, they solidified their foundations and now they're basically a tech company that sells pizza and they have the stock price to show for it. And now they're poised for even more growth during this next recessionary go round. Lesson number three, understand your audience to innovate. During the recession, Amazon smartly realized that people were about to have way less disposable income to spend on things like books. However, by tapping into people's unmet needs of providing entertainment during a time when they needed it the most, in a more economically digital delivery format, they focused on product innovation with the launch of Kindle, a low-cost e-reader and eventually a formidable tablet competitor to the much higher-priced iPad. This was an initiative that rapidly boosted Kindle and Amazon sales and brand equity. The accessible price point of Kindle reinforced Amazon's positioning as the world's largest and most affordable retailer. So, to recap, be human-centered. Recognize your position and your brand that they are in a position to bring comfort to people and attach it to something that can be really helpful. Two, invest in brand and infrastructure. It will pay dividends down the road. 
And three, keep an ear to the ground for human truths about your audience that will drive waves of innovation that will lead to growth. Now that we've looked back, let's look ahead to some predictions. Contrary to what you might think, and despite this gloomy economic outlook, our friends at Forrester are predicting that consumer spending will actually increase by 5%, spurred by stockpiled savings coming out of the pandemic. Now, while people might be spending more, they will be increasingly picky about their choices. People are predicted to indulge in fewer but higher quality experiences, constantly balancing the choice of spending versus saving for an uncertain future. So a better question to be asking right now isn't where I should be cutting, but how can I get my fair share of that 5%? Right away, we see that this isn't going to be a systematic slash and burn of spend, but rather a constant renegotiation within the self of whether or not a purchase is worth it. So, how can we create value beyond price? First, let's recognize brands that play only in the space of being low priced are only focusing on one side of the equation, cost. On the other side of the spectrum are those brands which are only worth paying more for, basically just plain old expensive or luxury items, and those don't tend to fare well during recessionary times. However, when we look at the combination of these two elements, brands that are seen as not only good value but also worth paying more for, now we're on to something. These leadership brands find a balance between the two expertly providing reassurance that a person's money is being well spent regardless of the dollar amount. We call these value plus brands. BAV data proves why being a value plus brand is a smart strategy. Whereas less than half of good value brands sit in the leadership quadrant of our power grid, 76% of value plus brands are seen as leaders. Value plus brands have high brand strength and stature and are well positioned for growth. So, I bet you're wondering how exactly can a brand take advantage of a value plus positioning? What exactly is behind that plus? Through quantitative analysis, we have uncovered that there are seven different dimensions that, when added to just straightforward value, create a value plus brand. They are, Value plus confident choice. These are dependable brands that are trusted for their consistent performance and quality, like Ford. Value plus real deal. Authentic and established brands that have stood the test of time, like Coca-Cola. Value plus smart solutions. Innovative brands that offer solutions for everyday people, like Dell. Value plus purpose. Caring brands that stand for more than their product offerings, like Walgreens. Value plus fun for a steal. Spirited brands that bring excitement at a reasonable price, like Crayola. Think of the hours of fun kids, or even adults, can have with a coloring page and a package of crayons. Value plus cheap chic. Brands that make fashion and trends accessible to a mass audience, like Revlon, unofficial sponsor of my lipstick color. And finally, value plus bargain buys. Everyday budget brands that embody the simplest form of value, like Oscar Mayer. Because really, is there anything more worth it than a delicious piece of bacon that brings you joy in every bite? And it's worth noting that to successfully implement a value plus strategy, it would be wise to ban the word consumer from your vocabulary entirely. And instead, focus on users. In a world where consumers are your end goal, more is just simply more noise. This can be overwhelming during uncertain times such as these. But if you're talking about users and you're talking about building more of anything, make it a solid foundational knowledge and stockpile of first party data to uncover unmet needs deep within your audience that your product portfolio can satisfy. Ultimately, by reorienting from simply products to make to jobs to be done, you can unleash yourself from the trap of tradition and unlock new opportunities from a value plus orientation. So, what's your roadmap for navigating out of this turbulent economic cycle? First, 
Put humans at the center of everything you do. Invest in understanding your audiences and remember that they trust you. Ask yourself at every turn, how can I provide assistance to people in genuine and authentic ways? Remember, consumers transact, but users interact. Two, keep the pedal down on your innovation investment. Amortization is your friend. And three, there's not just one way to create value. There are many different plus ups to value. Choose one that can turbocharge your meaning and connection with your users. I hope this pep talk that you've taken away some useful strategies to rethink brand value beyond pricing and promotions, and that you're feeling energized and inspired to tackle the challenges of marketing in a recession head on. Let's continue the conversation over on Instagram at Talk Brand to Me. Thank you. Well, cool. thanks, Laura. Thanks, Thank John. You. Do you have time for questions? Oh, or, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay, good. Well, first of all, I like your shirt. That's a very coveted VML wine, our swag oh, item. Oh, these are a so, hot ticket item. So that's yeah. a rare one. It's good to have, yes. Uh, <laughs> but no, I think I totally track it on Value Plus and, and branding. How does a brand, you've got a lot of options there on how to think about it, brands that do it. How does a brand think about which Value Plus pathway is right for them? Absolutely. Well, the first thing is go back to basics. Revisit all of your foundational brand documents and really make sure that you choose a path that aligns fundamentally with organically what your brand is and what it stands for. And then remember that there's seven choices up there, right? Yeah. And there's no one way. Pick a few, experiment, pilot, test, and learn. And you'll hit your stride and figure that out. And also, don't be afraid of the data. There's a lot of data actually behind this analysis and you can really dig into it and find out which one is gonna drive strong brand results. Cool, thanks Laura. And we'll find you on Instagram and keep the dialogue going. Yeah. Okay, thank thanks, you Laura. John. Thanks.